So I'm going to tell you a story. Um, uh, we're, we're a pretty new co-op. We're a youngster um, um, in the scheme of things. We have our little sister, Monadnock, here in, in town, the hometown co-op. But we, we started, we opened eight years ago. Um, but we started before that. Um, in about uh, 1999, uh, we incorporated as a co-op because we uh, used to have a co-op in the, in, in the uh, 80s, but uh, Bread and Circus came to town and the co-op closed in the early 80s sometime. So it didn't last long. That co-op lasted seven years. So we had uh, people that wanted to start a co-op. They, they had the idea to support local food production, that that was the important thing. The conversations uh, uh, turned into organizing. There were all kinds of member drives. And then we went, uh, there were people standing on the street with a three-fold brochure for years. $150 to join our co-op, and we're going we're gonna to support local food. Um, and we had a couple of, of setbacks. Uh, Bread and Circus was bought out by Whole Foods. Trader Joe's came to town. Northampton's a pretty um, um, affluent uh, uh, place, and commercial real estate was really hard to get. Um, uh, we had a site that we uh, thought was going to be great, um, and uh, um, did a bunch of work on it, spent most of our money on it, and then uh, found out that there was a deed restriction, that you can't have you can't sell groceries on that site. So, um, uh, you know, we, we thought that turned out Stop and Shop. Stop and Shop, so we went and met with Stop and Shop. They let us, let us along. We asked them, can you take that restriction off because we want to open our food co-op. And after about six months of meetings, um, I think they were really, thought they were great. That this is what they said. And we didn't really have great expectations, but they said, we consider retail a war and if you open, we will use every weapon in our arsenal to close you. So I think they thought they were, this was at the corporate level, I think they thought they you know, sent us packing. But we were working all along to find another location. And um, it was in a rock quarry. That seemed to be the only other place we could find in town that would have us. Um, no deed restriction there. Um, and. Uh, um, and we found out that all we had to do was have a million dollars in member loans, and then um, we could get a $7 million loan and uh, go from there. So we were like, yeah, we can do that. And six months later, we came back with a million dollars. And I think they thought they'd never see us again. It took them about a year and a half to get the rest of the financing together. Um, so our members have always been courageous. We didn't let Stop and Shop scare us. There was, you know. At that point, this was early, and we were one of the early co-ops of this new wave of co-ops to open, and I think we were the first co-op to open in Whole Foods territory. And you know, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, what will Whole Foods do? You know, they'll go in and they'll just smash you. You know, they're not going to let you open. And we were, I think we were the biggest startup of that time. That you know, the common thing was start small and grow, but we were in a community that really wanted a big store because they wanted to have a big impact. We did open in 2008, opened our co-op, and then we had staff. We opened the co-op with about 2,000 members and uh, 74 staff people. And, um, and we opened in 2008, and if you remember 2008, <laughs> the start of the biggest economic decline, we weren't turning back and closing. We've spent nine years trying to get open, all in all. Um, eight years later, um, we're bursting at the seams with 25 million in annual sales, and we're still growing 10% over last year. Could I, get, could I get the staff to stand up and all my other people from, from, uh, from River Valley Co-op? There's a bunch of you in here. The thing, the thing about our community is that, that the members had good ideas. They were persistent and courageous. Our staff had good ideas. You know, we, we, we had to adapt. Um, 
and, and change, and we've, we've changed quickly. Um, you know, that's what the sales growth has looked like. So anytime you get a system, you're doing it, you, you're like, it's already outdated. You have to do another system. Um, and, um, you know, and our staff has been, has been on the front lines of keeping that community connection strong. Um, you know, it's like, uh, it's like, oh, the pride parade is a big thing in Northampton. So the staff is like, let's have a staff band in the parade, you know. Um, uh, uh, there's the connections between the, the members and the staff is critical and, um, and, we, invite the, and we invite the community in all the time. We're, uh, half of our marketing budget is really going back into the community, into nonprofits. And the members come in and say, hey, can you sponsor this event that we're doing for the environment? Can you sponsor this event for, for hunger? And, you know, we have the, um, all kinds of things. And I know all co-ops do this. All the other co-ops that came before us, we're looking at what you've done for the past 40 years and like trying to catch up and to, and to be able to do what, what you're doing. Um, a truckload sale, um, you know, we, uh, Nate, our grocery manager, uh, worked with, with some people to try to get a truckload going, talked to people from other food co-ops that helped us get going and um, got some ideas and got, People, and it like started little and now it's like a three day extravaganza with every department and samples and music and, and it's a big thing and people are like, hey, when's your next truckload sale gonna be? So like that you know, interaction, keeping excitement between the community and the staff and, and the uh, ownership and that has also increased our ownership. Last year we, we had a bigger increase in membership um, than you've had than we've had in years um, and it's still uh, there's a member drive right now um, uh, and this is because people want to be a part of what we're doing um, back to what we started for 30% of our co-ops uh, purchases are local that's how much we're buying of all of our things we 4.2 million last year that was uh, about a five hundred thousand dollar increase over the year before and um, everyone on the staff and in the community is like you know working toward increasing that what you know what what more can we do to, to sell local foods we have a hundred and I heard 144 <laughs> now 144 tomorrow a hundred I don't know uh, 140 employees we focus on full-time employment um, so 90% of our staff are full-time. Uh, we've raised the wage scale in our eight years, uh, I think three times we're working on uh, building up to the, to the next. Um, we have really high sales per labor hour. We're working on, on pushing that uh, forward all the time. It's really important for us to be a good employer. We are a union employer. And all of this has brought us to the point where um, uh, you know, all the work to get one store open, we, we've got more people coming in the store than we can easily accommodate. People have to circle the parking lot at lunchtime. We've already got our staff parking a mile and a half away and we have, we've employed three people to run a shuttle, to shuttle them back and forth um, so that we can have parking spaces for our, for our customers. And, um, you know, there's more interest in the co-op, there's more interest in in the kind of community building that we do, the food that we offer, um, the store experience. And um, so we're asking everyone, our staff, our members, the board, what should we do for the future? And this is an early sketch <laughs> of our long range vision. Back when we were trying to get a location and we like kept getting you know, thwarted at every turn, um, we go to places outside of Northampton and the market study would come back and they'd say it's like well that might be a good place for your second or third store but this you need to be in Northampton for your first store that's where you build the mothership so thus you have the sketch of the mothership and the satellites around it um, the location being in a rock quarry we can't expand bigger where we are so we have always been thinking it would be additional stores and we're 
we're on the verge of that. Um, so a, having this conversation, we asked, did a member survey, um, asked people what they value most, and what we found was great alignment, local food, a con local economy, a sense of community, the selection and variety of products, co-op principles as practices in our store. We also asked people, you know, for our second store, um, what's more important um, to you? Do you want to serve our current community better by reducing the overcrowding in our store and parking lot, or do you want to serve a new community? And 60% of our owners said, we want to, we want to um, reduce the crowding in, in our current store in the parking lot. And it's like, OK, that's good. 40% said, we, we, want to serve a new, we want our co-op to serve a new community. So our ownership is like, I take that as like they're practical, and they're also visionary. Um, and so um, I thought, well, maybe we can do both. Um, so uh, short-term plan, we're remodeling, remodeling our current store. We invited our owners when we were doing our remodel to, um, or doing our refinancing. Um, if said so we're going to pay interest to someone, would you like, would you like to be part of this? We would like to open it up to our community. So we were refinancing uh, about four and a half million dollars in debt, and um, our owners came forward. Our, our um, Jade actually was our board president at the time, and um, she's like, "We did one million dollars to get us open. We're going to do two million now for refinancing." <laughs> I was like, wow, that seems like a stretch. Um, they don't get a new store out of it. But, um, uh, you know, we, we, we worked through it and we, like, we, we put it out there and we got $2.4 million in member loans to refinance and to su uh, support that and to support a remodel for the store. So we, over the last year we've been working on that, try to use the current space that we've got better. I didn't want to go to a second store with a beat up, um, you know, outdated equipment current store. I want to take care of what we've got. Um, so, so we've been working really hard on that over the, <laughs> I was thinking, oh, pizza parties up in, uh, up in uh, Burlington. We do remodels before the holidays for our staff. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> anyway, we've, we've got it pretty much finished before the holidays. We rebranded. Got our new logo, our bear. We've been introducing our bear to everyone. Um, the customers love their bear. They're wild about local. Um, we're just getting ourselves strengthened in position so that we can be successful in a second store. Everyone says your second store is the hardest. They don't remember their first one. <laughs> so here's, here's us over the last eight years. Um, we, uh, our first year, we did 8.2 million, and that's what our store looked like. Again, a quick sketch. Um, and in 2016, the same store looks kind of like this, right? Those of you who know. We're looking at two stores. What will that do? What do we care about? Well, we care about, we, we care about getting the growth so that we can continue to support our, our, um, our local farmers and local growers and our staff. Um, and so if we have two stores, we can go, like in a couple of years, in 2018, go from 27 million to 35 million. This is just a draft, not real, not real based on an actual spot. Um, go from 9,000 owners to 12,000. Um, go from 400 uh, local vendors to 425. Local purchases, uh, 6.8 million, up from 5.3. Uh, up to 245 employees, keep that full-time, that 90% full-time seems to work well for us. So have some impact like that. And then, oh, there you see, then three stores, do it again. Um, get up to 54.2 million with three stores. And that would put us a little bit smaller than the one whole food store across the river. Nine years of development and work to get to that. So it seems like, oh, this is really big. It's really a lot. And it's not. And then ultimately, 
I did a 25-year plan. I drafted a 25-year plan, opening six stores over the next 25 years, puts us to 2041, um, and uh, opening the sixth store in 2038, growing everything at 5%, 2041, we're at 135.3 million in co-op sales. Gives us 36,000 co-op owners, 750 local vendors, and 35.7 million in local purchases. I'm going to cry. 650 co-op employees, 90% of them full-time, uh, with, with great benefits um, and uh, uh, spreading the co-op economy. And I, I presented this, I did a draft with uh, my management team. And I said, so what do you think about opening six years in the next 25 years after I went through it? And they said, well, can we do like the thumbs up, thumbs down thing? And I'm like, sure, OK. So um, um, I said, so what do, you, what do you think? Thumbs up, sideways, don't really know, down. All of them. <laughs> and then I presented it. And then what they said was, the only thing is, can we do this faster? <laughs> is there a way we can do it faster? And then I presented it to the board, and the board said yes. Now I'm presenting it to, to all of you. Um, you know, in order to grow the co-op economy, we've got an increase in the interest in local foods. We've got an interest in people hungry and building community. We've got an interest in um, healthier foods, fresh food, organic food. This is our time. So we've got to do what we've got to do to figure out how to compete. And you know, go back to stop and shop. They're going to use every weapon in their arsenal. Well, they're sharpening up their tools. They're spending time in our store every week. We see them. They come in groups. You know, Whole Foods was in you know, the whole front end, like looking at our, looking at our front end, like, look how nice they are to their customers. <laughs> um, you know, we had uh, uh, big Y's in. They're like advertising local. They're, um, they're doing customer service. They're sharpening their game. We're sharpening ours. So back to the early sketch. Um, and this is a takeoff on, a, uh, on a, uh, an African proverb, changed a little bit, but boldly going together where no one could go as well alone is what co-op should be about. Thanks, everybody. Mm.